Rachel didn't have a boyfriend. And you lied about knowing her just now. That's two strikes. A jury might see it different. When I left the room, that girl was alive. You didn't come forward when you heard about the murder. I had no reason to. A maid is killed. How is this my business? She was your girlfriend. Ah, but you say she is not detective. Seems like you were trying to avoid this investigation. No, I had every intention of cooperation. In fact, when you found me, I was on my way to see my lawyer. Uh-huh, and your jet. He's on vacation in Florida. You said you were headed to London. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump to Moscow from there, and then you'd be out of our reach. Your knowledge of geography is so American. So let's say, maybe this girl, Rachel, maybe she liked it a little rough. And you obliged. Consenting adults, right? Sure, completely consenting. And the cane could have been involved. Could have been. Tell me how the cane fits into this scenario. Was it an accident? I'm sure it must have been. Did she ask you to use it? Yes, she asked me to do it. It was her idea. She liked that kind of thing, I guess. Like I said, it was all consensual. This girl was... kinky. She saw my cane. She wanted to try it. She was an adult. So, you admit it? No. No. The bruise mark on Rachel's neck matches your cane. You just said she asked you to choke her out. No, I'm not admitting anything to you people. Come on, Baran. An innocent girl is dead. You want to be macho? You want to be a man? Why don't you tell the truth for once? Women. They love power. They love machismo. But most of them, when they get their hands on a stallion, all they do is complain about the ride. Am I right? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. And these bloggers. They're all feminists, right? Always complaining about guys, especially macho guys. Guys like you. Eh, sorry. My lawyers have advised me not to take bait so easily offered by a policeman. Worth a shot. You've had 12 lawsuits? Yes, what of it? They were all resolved. I'm just impressed. I mean, you gotta be some kind of gentleman to cause that much noise. I appreciate your sarcasm, but I'm not allowed to discuss the details of my settlements. You had access to Rachel's voicemails, and you destroyed them to cover up your connection. Not true. I never touched the voicemails. Rachel knew all about you. She was gathering evidence about you, about unreported assaults. I wouldn't know anything about that. I never even heard these voicemails you're so very concerned about. You know, killing the witness to a crime gets you an automatic upgrade to murder one. What crimes? What witness? Rachel had evidence on you, Braun. She knew what you were up to. She wasn't a witness to anything. Those voicemails were about an expose, a plan to blackmail me. You're lying, and we can prove it. You 
just told us you never heard those voicemails, so there's no way you could know what they were about. You heard them, and you know it. You're looking better and better for this murder with every lie that comes out of your filthy mouth. You better wipe that smug smile off your face before you get to Rikers. Miss Benson, I'm innocent of this offensive charge. My lawyers will have this all thrown out, and my country will protect me. Really? We can place you at the murder scene. We can connect you to the victim and her voicemails. And your cane is a match for the murder weapon. Now might be a good time to panic. That's a hell of a lot of evidence to throw out. That's why I have a hell of a lot of lawyers. Don't worry, I'll be out in a few days. Then maybe I'll call you, baby. Gosh, you are just not my type. Come on, Ray. Let's go get a bite. Mr. Baron can stew in his own ick for a while. The district attorney's office takes a dim view of rape and murder in our city, Mr. Baran. Your defense contends you have diplomatic immunity, but the Russian consulate says you only have limited immunity. My status protects me from prosecution of any crime committed in the course of my diplomatic mission. I met Ms. Trevino in the capacity of a Russian media expert as a diplomat. Did you meet Rachel Trevino at the Parkview Regency? She said she worked there, so we agreed to meet. And instead you slept with her? Yes. Women are attracted to me, Ms. Carmichael. Not all of them. Objection! Withdrawn. The cane you carry matches the bruise on Ms. Trevino's neck. Did you have it with you during your meeting with her? I don't know. It's a cane, Miss Carmichael, not a precious diamond. I don't watch it every single minute. Judgment Day. Hero Dad Gets Revenge. Taking care of business. Father does what court cannot. American justice. The headlines go on. The people love this guy. Chavez Trevino. He killed the smug bastard who killed his daughter. Of course they love him. How the hell did he get a gun into the courtroom? This is gonna get messy quick. I say we charge him with voluntary manslaughter and let it go. Abby? You know what keeps me up at night? What if his aim was off? Just slightly. I wouldn't even be here to answer your question, Jack. You're right. I'm not setting a precedent for street justice in our courtrooms, despite what the people think they want. Prove it was premeditated. Hit him with murder one. You got it, boss. How did your client plead, Ms. Mullins? Not guilty. Be advised, we're going to mount a diminished capacity defense. The defendant is a Gulf War vet who suffers from chronic post-traumatic stress disorder. We will show that Mr. Trevino was under extreme emotional distress at the time of the shooting and is therefore not eligible for murder one. Any issues, Counselor? None, Your Honor. Defense has briefed us already. This doesn't change anything. We're moving ahead with murder one. Focus on the premeditation.
Can you tell us definitively who shot Alexander Baran? Without a doubt, the defendant, Chavez Trevino, shot him. I looked to see Mr. Trevino standing up with a smoking gun in his hand. Literally. And can you identify him for the court? Sitting right there. That's your shooter. Please let the record show the detective pointed at the defendant. Detective, how exactly did Mr. Trevino get a gun into the courtroom? Aren't there security measures? We're still investigating how he breached security. But he claims he stuffed it into his jacket and simply walked through. How difficult would it have been to get past security? Mr. Trevino had to avoid metal detectors and checkpoints covering every entrance. What would it take to get past all that security, Miss Benson? Forethought, planning, and intelligence. Mr. Trevino had to keep his cool and his wits about him at all times. Actions inconsistent with someone under emotional distress. In my view, yes. After the shooting, Mr. Trevino made a voluntary statement to you about why he shot Mr. Baran. True? Yes. What did he say? He said Mr. Baran had to die. He said Mr. Baran was going to claim immunity, escape prosecution, and run back to Russia. What else did he say? He said the courts were weak. Powerless. He said the only justice he wanted was a death sentence. So, his motive was less about avenging his daughter's murder and more about exacting the type of justice he wanted to see. Objection. Withdrawn. Is there any doubt as to the circumstances of the shooting detective? None. Mr. Trevino shot the defendant in front of witnesses and admitted to the murder afterward. I wish every case was as simple. Thank you, detective. Your Honor, the people rest. No further questions for this witness. Detective Benson, you testified that you saw the defendant, Chavez Trevino, shoot the victim. No, I testified that I turned around and saw Mr. Trevino with a smoking gun in his hand, about a second after I heard the shots. So you didn't actually see him do the shooting? Are we supposed to believe you're a relevant eyewitness? Objection. Argumentative. Sustained. Ms. Mullins, enough with the rhetoric. Immediately after the shooting, what did Mr. Trevino look like? I don't follow you. Was he composed? Calm? He was in possession of himself. Wasn't he yelling out, my baby, you murdered her? He said that, yes. He was out of his mind with grief. He was coming apart at the seams and you didn't see it? Really? I don't believe you. He was upset. Objection. 
Objection. Badgering. Objection overruled. Is your heart so cold, detective? Are you such a robot that you can't see another human in distress? Objection. Badgering. Sustained. The defense can save the dramatic storytelling for its own witness. Let's try this one more time. Was my client, Chavez Trevino, visibly shaken and distressed following the shooting? Yes. Did he appear rational? Calm? No. Was his behavior at that moment consistent with a person in severe emotional distress? I... Yes. So despite any forethought or planning he might have shown previously, the defendant was clearly in distress when he fired his weapon. True? True? Yes. Thank you. That's all for this witness, Your Honor. I just got a message from Cormac. You know the gun we took off Chav Trevino? Yeah. It's a ballistics match to the one used in the preppy joggers murder. The joggers? The two kids who got killed in the park? That was in the 90s. It was 1998. Me and Lenny Briscoe caught the case, but we ran out of leads and were never able to close it. We got pulled off, actually, and burned the old man's ass pretty good. Oh, tough break. But, well, then, how did Trevino get it? Yeah, good question, detective. This case has been on my mind since I got back. Then this falls in my lap. I feel like I owe it to Lenny. Ray, any way I can help out, I'm in. Thanks. Mickey, in the weeks after your sister's murder, how did your dad act? Crazy. My dad has PTSD again. It all came back. He needs different treatment. Objection. Mickey Trevino is not a psychiatrist, Your Honor. He's not qualified to diagnose his father. Sustained. Mr. Trevino, please limit your comments to what you saw. Tell us the behavior you observed. He, he couldn't control his temper. He, he would like yell when the phone rang or like if a dog was barking two miles away. I didn't know what to do. When Rachel was killed, I expected him to be really sad or d depressed, but not, you know, not angry. And this behavior? Had you ever seen it before? No, but my sister did. Objection. Hearsay. Regrettably, the witness's sister is deceased and can't testify to the truth of this statement. Sustained. The jury will disregard that last remark. When? After he got home from the Gulf War, 1991. Pop had his troubles with the law. A felony assault charge, some other bullshit. Uh, some other nonsense. Did you think he would hurt anyone? My uncle said he was getting dangerous. Look, like I said before, I thought he would be sad. I didn't think my dad would actually hurt someone. He's a good man, honestly. Do you think your father was in his right mind when he shot Alexander Baran? No. When my sister got murdered, I tell you, it smashed something deep inside my dad. And the idea that this fat Russian bastard could walk away scot-free because of some technicality? My dad did the world a favor. Thank you, Mickey. No further questions.
Did your father try to buy a gun a week before the attack? Yeah, I guess. Did you try to help sign for it? Yeah, so what? Your father was convicted of felony assault in 1992. He's not allowed to have a gun. Did you know about his conviction? Nah, I, I didn't know nothing about that.